Hello, reporting live from a Jupiter Lab environment. This is weird. Welcome to a rare opportunity where you're actually gonna get to see me code for once, kind of. And what do I mean by kind of? I guess we'll never know. Just kidding. You're gonna know if you just stay and watch the video. This video is for you if you are a freak in the sheets. <gasps> Spreadsheets, come on guys. Get your mind out of the gutter. But at the same time, you also recognize that spreadsheets aren't always the best way to work with data. So you have an appreciation for Python as well. I'm personally a Python girl through and through, but I've definitely had moments where I've taken parts of my data set from pandas into a spreadsheet so that I can take advantage of the simplicity and visual appeal of using Excel functions that just seem to work better for certain data manipulation tasks. So. Whether you're an Excel user who wants to learn how to use Python or you're a Python user who wants to fuse together the convenience of analyzing data with spreadsheets with the power of analyzing data through code, you're going to want to hear this. Today I've partnered up with Mido and I'm going to walk you through an example of how to analyze data going from spreadsheet functions to Python code. What exactly is Mido, you Mido ask? <laughs> Mito allows you to generate pandas code by manipulating a spreadsheet within a Jupyter notebook. I really wish this tool was around when I was trying to learn pandas because it would have saved me weeks, if not months, if not years of Googling the same pandas question far too many times. You are welcome Stack Overflow for all the traffic I bring you. Single-handedly keeping that site alive. Let's jump right into the demo where I show you how to use the tool. First things first, we need to install Mito. There are very, very simple, quick instructions on the Mito website for how to install it. It's installed the same as any other Python library. However, you don't even need to install it to start playing around with it because they have a hosted version that's accessible through the website, which is what I'm using now. Once you have Mito installed, you have to import it and you import it like any other Python library in this first cell right here. And once you import it, you can start plugging in some data to play around with. If you're familiar with pandas, you might already have a pandas data frame um, object that you want to try Mito with. If you have that, you can use the first way of uh, importing data with Mito, which is by actually just calling in your data frame argument right here. If you want to start from scratch, which is what I'm going to do today, I do not have an existing pandas data frame here. You can import data using this import button, nice and easy. And this will actually go into your file system and you could just select which files you want to import. I'm going to import two files because they have this common column here of zip and I want to combine them together so I can use multiple columns within the two data sets. So how do I combine them? I can use this merge button right here. I have specifications for the sheets that I want to merge together. I have the merge key, which is the zip column, the common column that they have. And then I can also select which columns to keep. I'm going to keep them all for now because I don't feel like deciding at this point. But bada bing, bada boom, I have this merge data set with zero effort. It's created a new tab down here. I'm going to rename this tab actually so that I don't get my wires crossed. We love good variable names or good object names. So here we are, merge data frame right here. Now, looking at this data frame, I don't actually care about all of these columns. So I'm just going to visually delete the ones that I don't want. I don't really need these binary columns here, but I do want to keep this demographic data and this location data that I have. I've already done several pandas equivalent commands just through this Excel like widget here. And everything I do is actually generating pandas equivalent code as I do it. It's giving me all the code, but it's also giving me comments that are telling me what that code is doing. This is useful in so many ways. If I don't know pandas, but I do know Excel, what an amazing way to learn how to use pandas, right? I'm just doing everything using Excel commands and then later seeing what those equivalent pandas commands are. Even if you do know a little bit of Python pandas, you usually have to kind of play around with it through trial and error before you can actually become aware of all of the functionality that pandas has. So this is a great way to explore it. Also, of course, a great way to have your code on hand so that you can reproduce it if you're repeating uh, the same analysis that you've already done for a similar structured data set. You can just quickly, instantly redo all that analysis instead of manually having to you know, go through 
to like all the Excel commands that you did the first time. All right, back to the demo. <laughs> so now that we have our merged data set, I can start doing some analysis on it. You can see up here, there are a few different buttons that will help you do your analysis. The first thing I'm interested in is I want to see which city has the highest median income. And I want to kind of see the, the top few cities that have the highest median income. So all I'm going to do is sort the median column in descending order. So I can do this using the standard Excel filtering button that we recognize if we have worked with spreadsheets before. And all I want to do is sort it in descending. So I'm going to specify that here. And now I've run into a bit of a pickle because I have NAN values, these not a number values, which usually mean that the value is missing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter by the click of a button here, add a filter. And I want to specify that I only want to see values that are not missing. So I'm going to say is not empty. And instantly, boom, we have our median income column sorted from highest to lowest. And I can see that Princeton Junction has the highest median income followed by some cities in California. Surprise, surprise. So what I get when I click summary stats here, I can see the distribution of median incomes for each zip code. I can also see how many values we're looking at here, the mean value, standard deviation, et cetera. In addition to the summary statistics, you can also create custom graphs um, using this graphing button right here. You know, you can choose the type of graph and specify your X and Y axis. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at it by city and instead of by zip code, and I want to see the maximum median income in each city. How do we do that? We want a pivot table. Easy peasy, just click this pivot table button up here. I want to use my merge data frame as a source. I want to do this by city, and the values that I want are median income, and I also want mean income. What I actually want to see is I want to see the max. So the zip code with the highest median income in that city. I want to create a new column that tells me whether it's this value that's higher or this value that's higher. So to do that, I'm going to click add column and I'm going to call it higher measure. And this is the really cool part. So I can actually use all standard Excel formulas. So what I want to do is the if function in Excel. So by the way, if you want to see which Excel functions you can use, you can just hit this docs button here and it'll show you some of them. Um, but anyways, I want to do if, if um, mean income is higher than median income, then I want my value to be mean. Otherwise, I want it to be median. Now you can see my values have been populated. Again, interesting that they're mostly all mean. I don't think I did the tool justice with this demo, but there it is. Goodbye from the Jupyter Lab environment. There you have it. Using Mito, you can now turn your spreadsheet gymnastics into perfect pandas code instantly. If you found this video useful, please go show it some love, like I know you know how to do. And while you're at it, go show Mito some love too. You can try the tool directly at trymito.io. It's linked in the description for you. You don't need to install anything. Just get right into experimenting, playing around with it. Please feel free to comment on the video if you have any questions or thoughts. Let me know what you want to see next and I will catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching. Bye.